Good evening, and welcome back to the Poe Museum. Before we begin, I'd like to remind you to keep your giant, razor-sharp, swinging pendulum blades in a locked and upright position at all times, or accidents could happen. Now that we have that out of the way, why don't I regale you with another installment of The Curator's Crypt. <music> Good evening, and welcome back to the Poe Museum. You might have heard that Edgar Allan Poe is considered the first American author to try to make a living from his writing. What this means is in Poe's day, writing wasn't really a job. It was a leisure activity. It was usually restricted people with family money or high paying jobs that allowed them the spare time to devote to writing. Often, writers from Poe's day were people who juggled working as lawyers or diplomats or custom house officials with time for writing. Poe, during his career, worked at different times as a magazine editor, literary critic, a soldier, might have even worked as a bricklayer for a while. He even tried to get a job as a school teacher, but nobody hired him. Can you imagine Edgar Allan Poe being your teacher? By 1846, three years before he died, after he left his last magazine position, he actually did manage to scrape together a little bit of a living through his freelance work, his lectures, and his public readings. But it wasn't easy. Because making a living as a writer was so difficult, finances were often on Poe's mind. In fact, the 26-year-old Poe wrote in 1835 to his aunt and future mother-in-law, Mariah Poe Clem, how glad he was to have a job in journalism where he made $15 a week. That's the Southern Literary Messenger. It comes out to about $720 a year, or roughly $23,500 in today's money. In the same letter, he mentions that he's found just the prettiest little house on Church Hill with a large yard and garden and all the modern conveniences for $5 a month, which comes out to roughly $187 in today's money. Now, I don't know of any place today in Richmond where you can rent a house or even an apartment for $187 a month. Between editorial assignments, Poe cobbled together a living by selling his works to various magazines, sometimes two or three a month. And he would get paid usually by how much space he took up in the magazine. So that brings us to this letter that Poe wrote to Thomas Willis White, the owner of the Southern Literary Messenger here in Richmond. On the second page, he writes, look over Hans Fall, one of his science fiction stories, and the literary notices by me in number 10, and see if you've not miscalculated the sum due me. There are 34 columns in all. Hans Fall cost me nearly a fortnight's hard labor and was written especially for the messenger. He got paid more for things written specifically for that magazine rather than for reprints. So Poe knew how much he should get paid. He knew how much based on the number of pages or the number of columns he took up in the magazine. So Hans Fall was a long story. He should have definitely made a lot more money. What do you think about a short story like this? Here's the Telltale Heart. In the January 1843 issue of The Pioneer, it starts on this page, takes up roughly a whole page there, and this page, and then it ends about three quarters of the way down here. Well, the pioneer paid him $10 for it. About six years later, Sartain's Union Magazine po paid Poe $10 for Annabelle Lee, which was a whole lot shorter than this. So maybe that's a sign of Poe's growing fame and stature. What about a longer story?
here's the Murders in the Rue Morgue from the April 1841 issue of Graham's Magazine. See, it starts right over here on page 166 and goes all the way back here to the top of page 179. Well, he got paid $56 for this one, so considerably more. So the Telltale Heart, that was $10, roughly $373 in today's money, whereas Murs in the Rue Morgue, $56, was about $1,800 in today's money. So it paid to write a longer story. So let's take a look in here. Now this is the March 1845 issue of the Southern Literary Messenger. And here on page 186 is his new poem, The Raven. He had just published this at the end of January in the American Review and in the New York Mirror. So here's a reprint. It starts over here on page 186, takes up this whole page, and then it ends over here on page 188. So it's just about two pages. So if the messenger paid roughly $5 a page, that means Poe probably would have gotten about $10 for it. And here we have, dated April 7th, 1845, from the account of the Southern Literary Messenger, this is Poe's handwritten receipt for a payment of $10 on account of the Southern Literary Messenger. So this might just be Poe's receipt for a printing of the Raven. Now if you look closely, you'll see that it's signed New York, not Richmond, and that Poe is paid by a fellow John Bisco. Bisco was Poe's boss, the owner of the Broadway Journal up in New York where Poe is living. The Southern Literary Messenger was down here in Richmond. Interstate banking wasn't really a thing, so Poe thought the easiest and quickest way to get paid was to have Bisco pay him on account of the messenger, and then the messenger's owner, Benjamin Blake Miner, would pay him back. This is a fragment of Edgar Allan Poe's original coffin. We covered this on an earlier installment of the Curator Script. And right underneath it, framed in with it, is another one of Poe's receipts, this time for $5 paid on account of the Southern Literary Messenger for a short one-page review. So here's another nice piece. This is Poe's invoice to Godey's Lay's book for an eight-page article he wrote called The Literati of New York City where he basically just listed the different authors in New York that he didn't like and made fun of each one of them. He's addressed it to the owner of the magazine, Louis Godey, and has asked him for $30. Now this time, Poe's living in New York and Godey is living in Philadelphia. So how po how's Poe going to get paid? Well, he asked Godey, to give the payment to Hardin & Company. They were shippers. They revolutionized shipping packages and parcels by train. And this was considered a much easier and safer way to transport money than using the postal service. And you can tell Godey paid him because he crossed out Poe's name with three diagonal slashes. So these three little scraps of paper recently entered the Poe Museum as gifts from literary collector Susan Jaffe Tain in honor of the Poe Museum Centennial this year. And they're going to go on display starting in April 28th, 2022. So come on down and see them in person. While these might seem like insignificant little scraps of paper, they're actually priceless artifacts that show us Poe's struggles of trying to be the first major American writer to make a living from his pen. And speaking of getting paid, if you'd like to help the Poe Museum preserve precious Poe pieces like these, 
why not become a patron and support the Poe Museum at patreon.com slash Poe Museum. Well, thanks for joining us this week. And until next time, I leave you with more footage of Edgar and Pluto, the Poe Museum cats. <laughs>